What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Bunnahabin Unpronounceable. Stick around. All right, so I've got an interesting review for you guys today. Uh, we're looking at a Bunnahabin and Usually Bunnahabin reviews are ones that I look forward to, but this one is a little bit special. Uh, we've got a new release. It came out last month. This one is a Taiwan exclusive. This is called the Bag Kluin. I don't know. Bunnahabin is owned by the Distel Group, which is a South African company, as are its sister distilleries. Uh, you have Tobermory in there and you have Deanston as well. All of them are well-respected distilleries, all of them known for their craft presentation. But it does seem like that's not always the case. We definitely have an outlier with this one. Uh, this is the first Bunnahabin product I've seen in, I guess over 10 years now, to come out without a craft presentation. However, it's not the first distill product I've seen come out without a craft presentation recently. We have another Taiwanese exclusive here from Deanston called the Sherry Cask Finish. Uh, this is another entry level expression, comes in at 40%. It's not a great whiskey. It does have some nice flavors in there, but ultimately it's a pretty forgettable expression. And that one was the first time that I noticed Distil releasing non-craft produced products into the Taiwan market. Um, and at the time, I didn't think that would be part of a wider effort, but it does seem that they want to slip more and more of these 40% exclusives into the market here. Both that Deanston and this Buna are going to be sherry expressions, which isn't surprising. Taiwanese consumers in general do like those sherry whiskeys. Um, so do I. Uh, I have yet to see any 40% Tobermory's or Lejegs pop up in the market here, but I'm worried that I might someday. Now, I'm not being a conspiracy theorist where there's some evil mega villain twisting his mustache at the Distal headquarters in South Africa, but I do think this is part of a concerted effort to sort of test the viability of some of these products. Possibly for wider distribution, or maybe just to make a bit of extra cash from the lucrative Taiwanese market. I don't know. Um, either way, here we are, my first non-craft presented Buna. Why don't we hop into our review, see what our whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So I just spent the entire intro talking about how this is not a craft presented whiskey, so you guys have probably figured out by now. This one comes in at 40% ABV, which is pretty disappointing from Bona Haben. Uh, another disappointment, it says it's soft filtered, which I guess isn't exactly chill filtered. I believe it's a filtration process that just happens at a slightly higher temperature, um, which seems disingenuous. Uh, it seems like an attempt is being made to muddy the waters. Either filter your whiskey or don't. Don't try and make it a spectrum where, yeah, we do filter, but not as much as those guys over there. Um, you're still filtering. And don't try and tell us there's different levels of filtration in order to make things more ambiguous. Just don't filter. Anyway, our color's natural. So, of course, we can't make out the color of our whiskey. Uh, we have a classic Buna bottle presentation here, which... I always like. I like the Buna look. I'm not in love with the little orange label at the bottom, but small gripe overall. It still works. I'm going to give the presentation a 4 out of 5. The label tells us it's soft filtered. Again, I'm not a fan of that move. It seems like they're trying to muddy the waters, filter it or don't. Uh, we have a pretty markety blurb on the back. It does give us some tasting notes and it does also mention that bourbon and sherry casks were involved in making this whiskey. Overall, not much to say here. Classic Buna bottle. Looks nice. Let's try our nose. So young and astringent. I'm getting a uh, new make, some white vinegar, some rice wine. Um, there's some plums in here, some raisins, a bit of black licorice. There is some milk chocolate and some indistinct sherry. And now our palate. Okay. Light, astringent, kind of hot. Uh, we get some white pepper heat in here, uh, some milk chocolate, some toffee, some honey, uh, more indistinct sherry notes in here, and some spices. Um, watery texture. And now our finish. Okay, more 
um, white pepper, potato vodka, um, nuts, more indistinct fruits, indistinct spices, short finish. All right, so this is definitely not your typical bun haban. It's gonna be a lot younger than most, and we do get some sherry in here, but I feel like it's so young that none of the cast have had enough time to have a real impact on the whiskey. In some ways, it's kind of new makey. Uh, definitely would have benefited from more time in the casks, and by more time, I mean many more years. Uh, this was bottled way too early. Uh, it was not or is not market ready. So that begs the question, why? Why are they doing this? And obviously, the answer is going to be money. Cynical as that may be, uh, they have an entirely too young, filtered, 40% product, and they want to test the viability, see if this is something that can bring them in more revenue. And you know, I've heard that this probably isn't the fault of the people who actually work at Bunnahabhain. I'm told they care about integrity there, and I'm quite certain this is something that came down from the higher-ups at Distal, but you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that they're looking into non-craft options, and it's just it's not a direction I want to see them go in. And you know, I think there's a couple reasons why they chose Taiwan to put out these kinds of releases. Um, Taiwan is a huge whiskey market. We buy a lot of whiskey per capita. Not only that, stuff like Deanston, stuff like Bonahaban are well-respected brands here. And um, we do have a lot of like bloggers and vloggers talking about whiskey here. And generally, they tend to be less finicky when it comes to craft-presented whiskey, uh, at least compared to the Western world. I'm not saying they don't care. A lot of people do, but it is just less of a thing in general here. Um, and, you know, Bunnahabhain had a pretty big ad campaign when this came out last month, and a lot of the big names in Taiwanese whiskey were out there promoting this product. Call me crazy, I think another reason might be that there's limited overlap or discussion between the whiskey scene here and the whiskey scene in the West. Uh, there's definitely some language, some cultural barriers there, and, you know, the conspiracy theorist in me thinks maybe Distel put these products out in the Taiwanese market thinking the broader whiskey market wouldn't catch wind of them. I certainly wouldn't want too many people knowing about this release. This stuff is bad. Um, my score here is going to be 70. This is horse piss. Um, even as a mixer, it doesn't work. There's better, cheaper mixers out there. Uh, you know, the Deanston at 40%, I wasn't a big fan of that one, but at least it was drinkable. This one isn't. And that Deanston didn't taste this young. Uh, it had some okay sherry notes to it. It wasn't great, but it was fine. Meanwhile, this one has absolutely no redeeming qualities. It is such a low effort whiskey. And, you know, I recently did a video where I ranked the Isla Distilleries. I put Bunnahabhain as my number one. I put it at the top. And then like a week later, this bottle started popping up on my local store shelves. Now, I still love Bunnahabhain. They're still a great distillery. They're one of my favorites, but guys, what are you doing here? Um, you must know full well this is not a very good whiskey and that it compromises the high standard of quality that your consumers expect from you. Now I have been disappointed by some of the no age stated expressions you put out in the past but at least with those ones they were still A craft presented and B nowhere near as bad as this stuff. This stuff is such a disappointment. Uh, I think you need to go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. So our value is not going to be very good here. This is a pretty cheap Bunnahabhain. In fact, it's cheaper than most. It's cheaper than the 12, but it's still not worth it. Uh, the whiskey sucks. It's young, it's hot, it's rough. And you know, if the 12 gets everything right with an entry level price tag, this one gets everything wrong. Literally any other Bunnahabhain you pick or almost any other whiskey you pick, it's probably going to be better than this stuff. And you know, I do realize that unless you live in Taiwan, there's about a 0% chance of you picking up this bottle. This video is more just to let you guys know what's happening over here in Taiwan. And yeah, I mean, this all sounds very dramatic. It sounds very scandalous. I do realize this is whiskey and not Watergate. But still, um, I just, you know, as a consumer, I don't like what the Distel Group is doing. I think they're cheapening and damaging the image of one of my favorite whiskey brands. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Do you live in Taiwan? Have you tried our bag clue in here? What were your thoughts? Finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.